Please stand as you're able for Thanksgiving for Baptism. We will be using setting eight today, found on page 203 in the front of your hymnal. Oh, setting 10, is it? Whoops. But that is the correct page number, so it's setting 10, page 203. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water in your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. <coughs> Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in your baptism, 
you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel. He said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have, trans have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent, stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or they refuse to hear for they are a rebellious house. They shall know that there has been a prophet among them. The word of the Lord. The psalm is Psalm 123, found in your bulletin. We'll, we'll intone by alternate verses. reading from 2 Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you're able for the gospel acclamation on page 205.
gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James and Joses, and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the 12 and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If, if any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a, toast, as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil, many who were sick and cured them. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So Jesus has finally made it back to his hometown of Nazareth to continue in his teaching and healing. The feeling back home is that of confusion and unbelief with comments like, where did he learn all this? Where did his wisdom come from? How and when did he develop the abilities to do these acts of power and healing? And wait a second, isn't this Mary's kid? Surely he didn't learn these things here. Maybe the critical townsfolk were not around for, or didn't remember that as a child, Jesus taught in the temple. Or maybe they were not around for Jesus' baptism when the voice from heaven said, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. How could it be that word didn't spread to every ear in town about what Jesus was up to? After all, these were his friends and family. Yes, this is Mary's kid. Haven't you heard of him before? It's odd that in Jesus' hometown, the people that should know him best seem that they don't know him at all and express their unbelief. In the next part of our reading today, Jesus sends out his disciples as guests to his hometown. Professor Matt Skinner at Luther Seminary says that Jesus doesn't, doesn't authorize the disciples to go out as know-it-alls. They are not sent to claim the future for him or anyone else. They are strangers to the town and therefore guests, humbly willing to commit themselves to the well-being of the people they encounter. It's almost like Jesus goes back to the drawing board in a way and says to his disciples that his hometown is not responding well to his celebrity. Maybe they will be more successful in spreading the good news since they are strangers. The disciples will approach the townspeople with vulnerability instead of bossing them around. This reminds me of the practice of accompaniment, that is walking together in solidarity with people from other cultures in a way that practices interdependence and mutuality. 
This is not the power of the world that we're used to seeing. This kind of power involves exercising self-control to walk with people where they are instead of blurting out that they're not doing discipleship right. In Mark, there is no one-size-fits-all disciple or follower of Jesus. Thanks be to God for that. There's no one perfect way. Some of y'all may remember that I just got back from a trip to the UK. While I was writing this sermon, I was trying to imagine what it would feel like to arrive in a foreign land and not only be a guest in town, but also be challenged with the task of sharing the good news of God in Christ. I mean, luckily I have been to seminary, so I have some ideas about how and where to start, but being a tourist was generally easy. Even with seminary training, I can imagine striking up conversation about faith in a different country would feel very different probably like when I was a hospital chaplain at UNC Rex. Maybe rejection is just part of the experience, something to be expected. When I was not on call as a chaplain, I served a neurology floor and a short-term care facility. It was my job to knock on patients' doors, ask if they wanted to chat, and go from there. I was rejected more often than not. At first, it stung a bit to feel the rejection, but as time went on, the quality of conversation and connection with people that took me up on a visit changed how I felt about visiting strangers. Over time, I learned to say to people, okay, well, if you change your mind, just let your nurse know that you want to talk to a chaplain and I'll come back. Have a nice day. That was how I would shake the dust off, off my feet, so to speak, and move on to the people that wanted a visit. When engaging in mission work, I guess it's safe to say you'll be rejected at some point. It's just a reality. Jesus was rejected. I'm sure the disciples were rejected. I've been rejected. But just like the disciples, Jesus calls us to follow him and calls us out to spread his word. There will be rejection, but also incredible conversation and connections between people beyond anything we can imagine. I think it's a miracle that God is able to take weak and broken people and accomplish wonderful things in and through us. We get to be co-creators with God, spreading good news, bringing more people into Jesus' reign of power and furthering the kingdom of God on earth. Being freed from sin, death, and evil, and freed for love and service to God and others. Even in our weakness, we are strong with God. The power and authority we see on TV, in our politics, and in our relationships is not the same as God's power. The power that we see most often, the power to dominate, power through fear and violence, using others as a step stool, pulling others down to be raised up or get ahead, showing no mercy or forcing others to bend to our will is not the power of God. Christ's power is countercultural by nature. It looks like valuing the young, the poor, the lonely, the sick and the ill. The lowly are raised up and sacrifices are made so that all may be healed. Thanks be to God. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The people's response today after each in your mercy is, hear our prayer. One, in the communion of saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. Glorious God, you bend down to wash the feet of your disciples. Let the servant church arise in our teaching, our praying, our healing, and our doing. Make all your faithful people powerful in weakness and strong in grace. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Life-giving God, your fingers trace the heavens and your hands mold the earth. Where there is drought, bring nourishing rain. Where there is devastation from fire or flood, bring relief. Sustain the well-being of every living thing. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you speak and the nations listen. Open those who govern to the cries of all who journey with no food or shelter, particularly people fleeing violence, those seeking freedom, and those in search of community. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, your embrace brings wholeness to those who are troubled. Anoint Karen, Melba, Marlene, Ray, Logan, Chuck, Dottie, Brooklyn, Trudy, Lori, Donna, Emma, Damon, Joanne, Valerie, Elizabeth, Susan, Thera, Michelle, Michael, Tom, Kay, Helen, Kay, and all who suffer in any way with the oil of healing and grant them renewal. In your mercy, Welcoming God, in your presence, strangers become companions and enemies become neighbors. Open our doors to those we have so easily shut out, particularly people who are different from us or who are marginalized by church or society. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, you gather us into your house of many dwelling places. We give thanks for our faithful departed. Inspire us by their lives of faith until with them we rest forever at our journey's end. In, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of that peace. <laughs> For the offertory hymn, we will sing ELW page 881, but only verse 1.
Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way that all may know your care and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Greetings, grace and peace to you, beloved of God of Grace Lutheran Church. It is a joy to know that we have Vicar Natalie to preach and to preside today. As you know, uh, ordination of word and sacrament is required before uh, blessing the actual sacrament. So uh, we are recording this so that I can bless these beforehand. Um, but I know that Vicar Natalie is doing a wonderful job with the rest of the service. We begin now with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Lord Jesus also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And next is the closing hymn on ELW 546. Thank you.
go in peace and share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.